Whoa, it's Woolsey. I'm on my alt account, Dan's Woman, again. Welcome back to the co-op building series, Level Swap. Today I've got Teron with me. Say hello, Teron. Hi there. You made reanimation. Reanimate, reanimated. Reanim oh my god, what is it? Reanimation. reanimation. It's a red level. It's been a while. He's a classic creator, guys. This is Level Swap. Teron and I are both going to start brand new levels, but every 20 minutes we must pass our levels over to each other until we've had three turns building on each level, which is six total time slots. In our building time, we're going to split up and record individually, so make sure that you watch the other side if you want to see their perspective as well. And uh, yeah, Teron, is there anything you have to say? I am excited. Let's see how this turns out. Hello, excited. I'm Woolsey. I wish you luck. Let's go. For this level swap, I'm going to be using the song Dark Star Dance by Midi Guy DP on a 12.5 second offset. It's so smooth. Everyone knows and loves this song. I'm not sure what to expect from Teron in this video because it's been a while since I've actually seen one of his recent levels. I'm going to go with some slow sync based gameplay that's going to be really easy to decorate. There's a pretty quick ship which transitions into a two times cube for the second half of the level. There's going to be a quick buffer on this blue orb to jump up on top of this platform. I said I was going to keep this pretty simple, but this was a perfect opportunity for a massive leap downwards. Since you jump up two blocks, I was worried about where the ceiling of the cube visibility would be. So I decided to chuck myself all the way back down to try and recenter myself because I don't want anything to be off screen. So right here, you're going to jump into a ball portal, which crushes you down into that one by one space. And there's going to be a massive swoop down into probably a robot portal to end this off. And I put a slope right there that you jump onto. It's like a double jump into some blue pads. Then I've repeated this green orb thing that we did earlier in the cube. I don't know. I think it's a nice trope to repeat. I kind of like the idea of extending these really far down and adding a spike at the bottom. I think it's a cool looking tall structure to have instead of just a pillar. I can place a lot of these mini saw blades everywhere. I'm just kind of worried that it will ruin the sight readability of this. I kind of like the idea of this massive structure underneath a floating one. I don't know. I get that kind of hunch sometimes that that should be there. We're gonna have spikes up here to catch you when you don't hit that blue orb. I do like the idea of these double sloped floating objects. I think it's cool. I'm running out of time even though I've done just the most basic structures ever. I haven't even added any other details really. I might just slap on a few ground spikes to give it a tint. All right, the 20 minutes are up. This is what I have got. I think it's kind of smooth. I'm not too big on the structures honestly, but I trust Teron to work well with this. That's kind of tight. Yeah, this is fine. That's 20 minutes up. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. <laughs> nope. Wamp. <laughs> Ooh, this is fire. What the? Thank you. This is awesome. What? A duel? Oh my god, I don't think I've... When was the last time I actually decorated the duel? Holy crap. Okay. It's so easy to just decorate half of it and copy paste. Yo. Oh, you killed it. I like it. That is going to be interesting. You're right. Wamp. <laughs> Dude, that was sick. Anyway. Let's start the timer, right? <laughs> You're rushing me. Oh my. You're in my head. Stop it. it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Get out of my head. All right. Let's go. Not sure how to design. So my first step, I think, is going to be connecting the structures. I need to make a few assets using black blending as the base. This is initially going to be invisible due to how blending works. So I'm going to be putting a few details on different editor layers that I'm going to set groups to individually. And I guess I go with a pulsing object and I'm going to put one of these bricks. So obviously the square objects are going to work no matter what the orientation is. But for these, I'm going to have to make different versions depending on what kind of junction I need to connect connect them together, which is kind of scary. It's going to be a little bit time consuming. This should be good for now. So I can just copy paste these squares downwards like that. And I can start putting them into place. It's going to make one simple connection at first, and then I'm going to test a pulse with it. So starting on group three, we're going to have to go into preview mode for this. I think a lot of gray is going to work for this level, but I do need a dash of color in there. So for group four, I'm probably going to be using, we'll say blue, because it's quite easy to use. I think the two square objects are more safe to copy paste the pulses for a lot more. I can also change the color of these together to the blue, maybe a light green, just to make it feel a bit more climactic. Then I can copy paste the whole lot again, probably space these out a tiny bit more on this set, and then reuse these in the middle. I don't know, I'm just randomly scattering these around, so you can see down here that it's making like a, a flashy pattern. And since they are all linked to color channel 10, I can make a massive pulse for that whole color channel that's going to flash it white right there to the music. And I need to make sure that the other flashes stop happening while that's going on. So I'm going to group parent the very left trigger before that all happens, scale up and move out the way, then I can probably just copy paste the rest of these. I don't know, this is the weirdest pulse pattern I've ever made. I'm very far out my comfort zone right now, as you can tell. Here's a demonstration of how these pulses are going to work. 
I've copy pasted some arrows with glow that kind of follow these pulsing patterns. I'll probably replace Terrons that he put over here. Then I'll probably make a new color, which is going to be a pretty dark gray. And I'll just copy the values of three or something. And extend them down to the ground. And then I'll probably just make my own 3D for it instead of having to use the in-game one. You'll see. So if I copy all of these now and then put them on a new editor layer, a new group, just in case I want to change the opacity. Then just move it a little bit to the side like that. Decrease the editor layer by one and then the brightness by a little bit. Actually, yeah, this is brilliant because on these two big flashes that go to white, I can then change that group seven, which is gonna look cool. There we go, the 3D kinda pops out like that. Then I just copy the values and put in some ground spikes really quickly. And I can just flip it upside down really quickly to end this off, okay. So? <gasps> That's time, oh my god. Dude, why didn't I change the background color at all? That's silly of me. Oh, I forgot the background pulses, that is true. Oh. What? You did so much! What the heck? I really like what you did. Good luck, man. Not that you need it, because apparently you're just gonna absolutely smash this video. What? <laughs> Don't say it. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. So he's went with, like, these linear structures instead of filling them up at the bottom, which is an interesting choice. Okay, 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 right. We're completely bouncing off what he's got right now. Just copy-pasting these lines and putting them together, I suppose. So I'm gonna go through these layer by layer and just give them an incremented group every time. All right, this is the final layer. It's on 32. Okay, then we need to set this to a new color. So it kind of slinks into the shadows like that. Yeah, perfect. Then I need to do my pulsing staircase for these groups. <laughs> I do this in pretty much every single level swap, but it's just essential. It gets so much work done and it can put a good twist on a design that's already made. There we go, look at that. It's kind of like rising upwards like that. We can repeat that over and over again. Then I'll make a pulsing beam that can sit behind it that's gonna be on one of those groups. We're gonna say 15, it's the first number that came into my head. When it's doubled up, I can honestly like mix up the group so one of them can be 15 the other one can be like 24 i don't want to use these too much i'm gonna try my best not to spam them everywhere because obviously this design's already happened and stuff like that i'm probably gonna add some color triggers for the base color of color channel 2 which is a desaturated orange i'm gonna change the fade time down to like 0.2 just change this around a bit make it a bit more saturated at times make it a bit less i can even briefly change this to pink i think that's gonna work pretty well i can copy paste them a little bit there we go it's got a bit of a different hue to it now. That's nice. I'm gonna make a few pulses. One for the background, which is changing the brightness and saturation up. And I'm probably gonna put one for the glow that's on color channel three with the same thing. Maybe a bit of extra hue. Then I'm just setting up pulses for the glow in the background when the song picks up. You can see over here what that's doing. It's making the glow and then the background pulse to the ns, ns, ns. I'm probably going to make a quick design for the blocks, which is going to copy the color of the background for the base. In fact, there needs to be a base to the base, which is some black objects. If I delete those, you can see the difference right there. So then I've put a color channel three outline, which is going to pulse like that. And then I need to add some glow on top to really emphasize it. There we go. And then I'll probably have another outline above it on T3. I don't even know anymore. My layers are all messed up. That's time i'm afraid ah Whoa. that's time damn didn't expect it to be this challenging oh, i didn't do much but i'm liking it so far i'm liking it oh i didn't do much ah! i only did like a second or two. Oh, that's what i'm gonna do next time i know what i'm gonna do next time i just can't do it now oh Yay. okay that's a good design oh you did more Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. Best of luck, man. We need more objects in this, I believe. That's why it's looking so empty right here. And it's fine because these background pieces go behind all of the objects. So I could just overlay it like that and it's not a problem. Just gonna make sure when I flip it that the 3D is consistent. I need to copy a few of these pulses. I'm just gonna pick out random ones. So I'll copy paste these up, out the way, and then change these to background. And I want these to go to black. Okay, this is looking smoother already. Nice. And I can probably do the same for the object if I just... You know what? I'm going to copy paste them and just flip them. I have no idea what this is going to do, but I'm just going to put this on the object. Just need this to go a little bit crazy so you can't really tell. Yeah, that's so much smoother already. Okay, nuts. I'm happy with that. I'll just add the saws to one of the groups and then add like another overlay on top that doesn't pulse. So it still kind of stabilizes it so not everything's pulsing. All right, this is coming together a little bit now. Thank goodness. Probably going to bounce off what he's done with the ground spikes down here. How it's all choppy. Uh, I quite fancy making a big diamond 
object that I can copy paste. I've made a strange diamond pattern that I can spam around for a bit of foreground on top of these blocks. It puts less pressure on me for design. The pulses from earlier are making a return because they perfectly fit the wave duration. I can probably go crazy and give these two different groups, like three and five. Then behind all this on T2, I can probably just slot in some group six black objects. I'm hue changing and brightness changing these so they stand out a bit more from the diamonds and stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's so weird, isn't it? This is called a blending screen. What I'm going to do is change the opacity a little bit further down. So when it's active, it gives the whole level a tint like that. It lifts all of the dark space and gives it this uh, weird monstrosity. So eight is starting off invisible. Then it's going to lock to the X axis for a very long time. And it's going to fade up and down in brightness. Here we go. You can see it happening already. Yeah, this looks so much more polished now. There we wow. go. Whoa, Teron, uh, you scare yeah. me. Stop. I did a lot, actually, now that I look at it. I'm hype, I'm hype. Dude, I like it. Oh my I god. It. It's, it's so cool. Oh, <gasps> that wave is awesome. You like the wave? What? what? Oh, I can still do the thing that I couldn't do last round. That's good. These levels are so different. Three, two, two one. one. Good luck, man. So I can finally add this pulse trigger that I didn't get to add last time for color channel seven which is gonna copy two, I think, just maybe a little bit more bright, a little bit more saturated, which makes the areas in between these checkers filled in. I like that. So I've placed in a black strip. You can see it right here, pulsing very bright with the color channel there. What I'm planning to do is set this on B4 at the very back on don't fade, don't enter. It needs a group, hold on. 43, oh my God, okay. So 43 can be offset really far up the screen, like a 120 away on zero move time before you get to it. Then as you approach it, 43, not 32, 43, can move down that distance on an ease out for like three seconds. With a few adjustments to distances, you see, it's gonna swoop down like that. I've just got blank objects, as you can see, highlighted in green. I'm gonna give them color five, which is the low background color, and then give them 10, which is one of the pulses from these objects up here. There we go. That's working pretty nicely. I think though I'm going to cave in and give all of these sweeping beams an opacity because they are way too in my face. I'm afraid you're going to at least half opacity, maybe even a third. Yeah, you see that looks so much better. I kind of like the stylistic side of having them full opacity because it was such a contrast to what was there. But yeah, this is so much cleaner and it gives me a lot more opportunity to clean up the design. I've done the same for the spikes and I'm now adding the same for the saws, just like that. Then they're probably gonna have some sort of star above them. Oh yeah, we could just add like 20 or something. So the saws have like two pulsing parts to them. Uh, we could probably increase the brightness a little bit though. So we made an outline earlier. I'm gonna copy the values of that. And on top of the blank squares, I'm probably going to put a pulsing square just like that. Really high up on B4, I'm probably going to put around some really big black glow. That's just going to kind of make everything pop out. Because I feel like... Oh, no. <laughs> Let me make a new black. Hold on. Because a lot of the detail was meshing together. I want to have, like, a clear difference between these objects and the background and stuff. That is what I'm talking about. That makes it look so much more mystical. I think it's in a good enough state to give back to Teron. Right now, actually, hi. I was yeah, trying to figure out how you did your overlay thing with group A and I couldn't, yeah. so I just made my own. <laughs> I see, that's fine. Let me play from zero. Ah! This is so questionable. What do you mean questionable? It looks awesome. I, it, it's changed a lot since you've seen it. That's all I'm saying. Ooh. Oh yeah, that was a good transition. I like that. <gasps> Whoa, how did I not think of that? Okay. Uh, you're a genius. You're, you're all right. What did I do? You're giving me credit for so much stuff that I don't even know what I've done. <laughs> I'm just looking at your spammed glow at the bottom. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I am ready. Final round. This is it. Let's go. Let's go. We're using white and black a little bit for the background. I think that's cool. <laughs> Teron's left in these little lines. Hold on. Why are these here? <laughs> Master class and copy paste. Pulse trigger edition. I'm just gonna put these all the way at the beginning. If I can even see them. There's a massive screen here. But there's like another line to them that isn't pulsing there. Are you seeing that? 14. Okay, so whenever there's an object pulse, we need to pulse 14 and then 8 down to black. We can probably just select this specific portion of the level instead of the whole thing and move it to the left. So let's put a move trigger right here. Moves 200 left off the screen. Ease in on two seconds, and that leaves space for an end screen, I hope. Let's just smart start pause out of here. 
There we go. Okay, end screen would rise up right there. I ripped these pulsing diamonds from the insides of the ground spikes over here. And I'm going to make the font out of it for the end screen. There's going to be some consistency to it. So for the top of the A, I copied the middle of the H, like the middle line, and then just put it on the top, you know? So it's a bit of a mess, but it's still going to be a little bit coordinated. This is kind of wide. I'm just thinking, I bet I can just crush the W together like this. Yeah, that's actually really smart. Why didn't I do that earlier? So we can have it right about here on T3. Uh, give it a new group 19 on top of all of its other ridiculous pulsing groups. 19 can be moved like 30 blocks to the right, just so it's a bit closer to the end screen wall without extending the length of the level. It's also going to start off being 200 downwards and then as we get towards the end it's gonna move up 200 uh, four seconds probably back out so it should appear right now there we go back down please yes I guess I can add a little underlay to it just like that on the Z order below I think that looks sick I'm gonna do something weird on B4 all the way down at the bottom I'm going to create a new color channel which is gonna copy the color of the background and you can see that's like barely visible, right? I kind of want to just slot it in as like a background detail here. Yeah. <laughs> that looks so stupid. That's 20 minutes. All right, Tom and Jeron final. Here it is. Let's see. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's sick. Dude, I was not expecting that. The 1.9 background earlier, and then you change it to the neon one. That's such a clever way to use the background. Whoa, what? what? <laughs> oh, that's the logo. <laughs> <laughs> Did you spot it already? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's the logo in the background. Not bad. Oh, wow. Dude, it looks so different. That's insane. That was Level Swap with Teron. Let me know in the comments what you think, because that was a roller coaster of emotions. This turned out amazingly. I I was a bit nervous at the beginning, but then things just clicked, yeah. These levels will be uploaded to the Dance Woman account. Go and check out Teron's video that will be uploaded three hours after this premiere. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything. Thank you so much for watching, and... Uh, have a good day. See you next time, I guess. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo.